a little globby snack for this baboon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's the Sway Parade with Chuck Sway. Welcome into the Sway Parade. My name is Chuck Sway and this, bang, 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 bang. Is the parade, the promenade down the infinite street of peculiar news, country strong sports, and scrub clips from around the net. Things to look forward to this week. Beef curtain decor, exploding toilets, and Greenland isn't green enough. But before we get into it, I just want to take a quick moment and ask you for an offering. Not to me, not to the show, but to the almighty algorithm. That's right. If you're listening on any podcast platform, if you're watching here on YouTube, go ahead and leave a review, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it doesn't have to be positive, just something because the almighty algorithm just wants something. And that is what I ask of you. It's as simple as going to the app that you're consuming on and engaging with it. And that's it. Now there is a hotline for the show and it is always open and you can call it at 818-275-SWAY. 24-7, you call that number up, leave any sort of message you want. It does not get screened until this show is being recorded. There is a caller this week. I haven't screened it. I have no idea what it's going to be. And that is the fun of it. So let's take a look at this week's caller. Yeah, my name is Mark Quintez. And my question is, would you rather have to fight a gorilla once a week for 30 minutes, but you never know when he's going to attack or have all your intrusive thoughts come true. Interesting question. Caller. I believe it was, uh, Marquinta. Hold on. I want to get his name, right? Marquintez. Marquintez. My apologies. <laughs> the white is showing. So Marquintez's question would I rather fight a gorilla once a week for 30 minutes and not having known when the gorilla will show up to fight or have all of my intrusive thoughts come true? Ooh. Well, if we date back to in our weekly reminder of episode 14, Animal King, where we looked at the Americans and the percentage of Americans that think that they can take on uh, a wide array of animals. From what I recall... Gorilla was not on that list, but actually just this week, I saw a video. I've seen it before, and you probably have too. I don't have it in front of me because I didn't know that this was going to be a part of the show. But it is a video of two gorillas going at it in a zoo. And then the caption, something along the lines of they're calling for help. Someone come help. It's like, what's a zookeeper going to do? Go in and break it up. That's the thing with gorillas. Uh, it, this is a damned if you do, damned if you don't question because a gorilla once a week having no idea when it's going to happen. Imagine it's 2 a.m. You're nodded off. You're asleep. Dreaming whatever dreams may be. And then you hear the pounding of a gorilla chest and then you're you're fighting it. You're not fighting it. You're getting your ass kicked by a gorilla for 30 minutes. Here's the thing with this question. Uh, how you, you're not going to last long fighting a gorilla for 30 minutes. It might just be one fight and then you're done. Cause the gorilla is going to smash your face. In, and that will be that on the flip side, all of my intrusive thoughts coming true. I'd like to think that I am much like you in my intrusive thoughts and that they are, well, intrusive and uh, not friendly and not kind and not civil. Uh, nothing good could come of it. So I would think the consequences of one of my intrusive thoughts coming true would be much more drawn out than getting beat up by a gorilla for, I'm just going to say it's going to be one session of 30 minutes of getting my ass kicked by a gorilla and then that'll be it. I'll be done. 
because the gorilla is going to kill me. Whereas intrusive thoughts, they come true. Uh, there's probably going to be some sort of court proceedings, get put on trial, get put away for a long time. I'm going to take the quick and easy way out. And once a week for 30 minutes, I will fight a gorilla having no idea when it's going to attack. But I'm thinking it'll only be one time. And then that gorilla can go on to its next assignment to attack the next person for 30 minutes. Because I there's no way. There's no way. I mean, how how much does the average gorilla weigh? Uh, okay, males are much larger than females. Oh, so it didn't specify, so maybe it's a female gorilla, but I'm just going to assume it's a male. Uh, adult males weigh an average of 300 pounds and up to 500 pounds. So the average, I'm actually about the weight of an average gorilla, uh, but up to 500 pounds, another 200 pounds on me. And then you got to think the reach of a gorilla uh, is, is no short distance. Uh, they stand up to six feet tall. So, okay. So I'm, I'm taller than a gorilla and I weigh about the same as an average gorilla. Uh, and then here we go. Adult females weigh in at 150 to 200 pounds and stand at four and a half feet tall. Even if it's a female, even with the height and weight advantage, I don't have that primal animalistic advantage. I am a, a soft bodied human that is going to try and go toe to toe with a gorilla. So if it's a male, if I get picked in that lottery, that it's a male that's fighting me, it, it's, it's donezo. If a female gorilla gets selected to fight me, I think it's still donezo. I still think I don't have a chance. I think it comes down to the reach and the fact that it is a fucking gorilla. So thank you for the call, Mark Quintez. That's an excellent question. And I, I love the the fighting scenarios that are coming through uh, since the the five-year-olds. How many five-year-olds could I take on? Keep them coming. 818-275-SWAY. It's 818-275-7929. Write it down. Save it in your phone. Call it when you're feeling frisky. And if you think, ooh, what about this type of fight? But really, it doesn't have to be fights. That's been the theme recently. But it could be anything you want. Now, moving on to our first main segment of the show, we got to scrub some clips. Scrub my clip. Clips lined up this week as they normally are. Uh, random collection. There's really no rhyme or reason to scrub my clip segment. As long as there's a clip to scrub, and it'll be shown on the show. And I'll just let you know, as the listener and the viewer, if you find something, because I guarantee you this isn't the only program that you're tuning into, only bit of content that you're consuming throughout the day, throughout the week. If you find something that's like, ooh, I want this on the Sway Parade. Well, super easy to get it to me. If you're on the social media app that you're scrolling through, if you're on Instagram, TikTok, what have you, and you just want to shoot me a DM of it, at Chuck underscore Sway on those platforms. You can do that. Or if you want to be a little bit more traditional, you can send me an email. The email address is I'm him at chucksway.com. Anything you send in, I'll be sure to give you credit. I know I've missed a, a couple of those credits uh, in previous weeks, but hey, we get better every single week. Now, going on to the clips, first one here is a lamp. Um, and this isn't just any normal lamp because then it cuts to a woman in downward dog with no pants on being covered in various epoxies and resins. And I don't know how the whole shebang works with that, but her, her hind quarters are being covered and plastered. And from that, they turned it into a uh, shape like a light bulb. Uh, but it, it's her hindquarters with her uh, meaty curtains as arguably the centerpiece of this piece of decor. Uh, they'll do anything. You can do anything you want nowadays. If you want a pussy hanging on your wall, well, I mean, the dude's wearing an orange shirt. I could assume he maybe got that at the Home Depot. Go down, get a shirt, 
get some gloves, get some epoxy and plaster and all that stuff. And you have yourself a pussy lamp. Not something that would tie my room together, but hey, my room isn't like your room. Uh, if you want to look more into this uh, and anything else uh, of all the clips, everything shown on the show, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but there is a Patreon and all the links, everything that is shown on the show, you can view on the Patreon for free. You don't have to sign up. There is, of course, paid tiers, but everything's posted there. If you want to see, uh, this is definitely going to be blurred out just because I don't want to take the risk on YouTube of an epoxied pussy out there for the the terms and conditions, the copyright, the checker to make sure, hey, it's okay for YouTube. So if you want to see what this pussy lamp looks like, go to the show notes. Uh, if you're listening, go to the description on YouTube. There's a link to that Patreon. Click on this week's episode, this is episode 38, and you can see for yourself this epoxied pussy lamp. Next clip. To hopefully pop it out. So there's a hood of a car with a kettle of tea, given the locale in which this was filmed. A uh, big old dent on, actually, let me take that back. It's not a hood. It's a bonnet because we're across the pond. Uh, so there's a big dent. They're pouring hot water over it to, if you've ever seen it before, to pop a dent out of a car. you got to heat up that area. And the tool to pop out, I mean, there are specialty tools. You can go to a shop, have this done for probably hundreds of dollars or hundreds of pounds, depending on where you're at in the world. And they have specialty tools. They might use the water trick, but they might have something more special than that. But this is done just on the driveway. What do they call the driveway in, in England? Uh, a drive? A parkway? I don't know but they're just doing it in their driveway. So they take hot water from the kettle, substitute for the tea for the morning. We'll get it later. And their special tool that they plop on to the middle of the dent to pull it out is a giant dildo. Let's see if it works. This is a dilly on the bonnet. It's not a dildo, it's a dilly. <laughs> Boom, dent repair, just like that. Same thing with the pussy lamp. You just need a few tools and you can make art. In this case, you just need a few tools and you can repair even the biggest of dents. You need a dent. You need a hot kettle with hot water. And you need um, a sizable dilly. And there's the whole argument that size doesn't matter. But in this case, you need to get as big a dilly as you can because more surface area, one for the suction mount at the end of it, but two to get your, your hands around it and give it a good throw it up and fix that dent. Get that dilly on the bonnet. It's on that. As simple as that. Don't pay your shop hundreds of dollars or hundreds of pounds. Just go down to the, the sex store and buy a dildo, buy a dilly. How you use it is, is your, your choice outside of dent repair. But if you have a big old dent, just go buy a dildo. You probably already have a kettle. You, you, you should have water. And once that's all said and done, you no longer have a dent in your car. Moving on. Uh, it's a roller coaster. It's a uh, the Ring of Fire, I believe, what it's called. Uh, typically found at uh, you know state fairs, uh, pop up carnivals, things like that. It's the, just the big the big loop. You know, you sit in it. It goes forward. You go loop de loop. It goes backwards. You go loop de loop. Uh, for years, not every year, but four years, I've been attending the local state fair when it does come around. And every year they have this ring of fire set up. And every year I go, nope, not for me. And this video probably just solidifies that thought that much more because it's going around. And 
it's a little pixelated. Let's see if I blow this up. You see here, there's a little stream here, right at the apex, the top of the loop. And as the ring of fire is coming around, oh, someone did, did yak in the middle of the, like the middle cart. And just through physics, centrifugal force, gravity, everything working in harmony, the puke is almost suspended airborne as it's starting to make its way down to Earth as gravity pulls it down. But it was ejected in such a velocity and force that it had enough time to free fall as the front of the cart was coming around. Oof, and it just it just covers the first half of the cart. And yeah, it was one, two, three, four back. And let's see who's all affected. I mean, pretty much through four. And like I said, it's a little pixelated. It doesn't even look like there are people sitting in the back two carts. So shoulda, coulda, woulda when you got in. Hey, you don't want to sit in the front, sit in the back. And that might be a little bit of an insight for those who do like to ride this ring of fire at the fair, at the carnival, wherever. Sit in the back. If it's going one direction and someone pukes, you're good. But if it's going the other direction, then you're technically in the front. You're kind of fucked either way. But something to consider if you decide to go on that ride. As I said, this solidifies it for me that I will not be attending and going on a ride like this. Because who a stranger's puke could just fall on you. And I understand really anywhere out in the wild you could get puked on. But this one, you're sitting there. And then it just starts raining, vomit. It's like, think of the scene from the Sandlot where they do the cha. They take a wriggle lip dippers in and then they swallow it, which is a cardinal mistake. And they're on the, the turny turvy ride, whatever it was. And then they just start yakking. They cover themselves. They cover everyone else on the ride. They cover everyone standing around. Uh, I mean, the carnival in fair is just a place to get puked on. So just, I don't know, just be be aware and be safe out there. Moving on to the next clip. This one most definitely is getting blurred out. So this is a, uh, a woman uh, with her pants down around her thighs uh, and her puss is exposed and she's not making a lamp, but what is she doing? Let's take a look. So they're spritzing something and, Paint the picture for viewers and listeners because 100% this is viewed out or blurred out on YouTube. Uh, big old bush, uh, unmaintained crop for good amount of time. They're spraying it. She's kind of rubbing it on non-sexually, just getting getting whatever they're spraying on perfume. Uh, it might be funky down there. You never know. Uh, oh no, that is a uh, that's a lighter. <laughs> So the lighter has been lit by the assistant that is sitting down right next to this lady with her puss out and sprayed perfume or lighter fluid. Who knows? And now they're lighting her twat aflame. And then the the giggles. It's funny. So I'd love to more love to know more of the the backstory of this clip because my first thought when seeing it was, oh, this is just a very fast way to trim your pubes. But once the flame gets lit, uh, fast maybe, effective no, because at the end of it, when the fire gets flapped out, uh, the bush is still there. Maybe a little bit singed but it's still there. A uh, little bit of tip for you. If you are looking to trim your pubes and you don't have a razor, you don't have shaving cream and you have a, a mischievous friend by your side, put some lighter fluid on it, put some something flammable, set it ablaze and you'll be all the rage here on the Sway Parade. All right, well, if you thought that that clip was moist, Think again, because there is a moisture clip. Let's take a look. This next clip. Mm. 
It's so moist. Uh, if you recall, if you watched and listened to the show last week, uh, the scratch and lick, which was unexpected for all the gagging that ensued. I'm going to pop back over here where the guy was down in his hip, getting a scratch in whatever he had on his fingers. I proceeded to gag for a good five minutes. Uh, and that was that, uh, I explained in that segment that when itches come about, depending on where they're at, mostly they're acceptable. It comes down to obviously the location on the body where the itch is and then the time spent itching. In the clip last week, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. On YouTube, there's a condensed clip. It's like five minutes long of just that segment. You can see exactly what I'm talking about if you haven't seen it yet. He's down in his hip for a while. Over this past week, uh, I had, uh, I didn't even have an itch. And I explained this last week too. Sometimes I just keep my hand and I just set it instead of putting it in my pockets. I just rest it in between my pants, my trousers and the, my skin, my hip. And I just keep it there. And as I was doing that, Mrs. Sway was sitting in the kitchen, enjoying a nice snack. And she looked at me with my hand on my hip. And then she just said, Hey, can you talk about something, right? Just anything until I'm done eating. And then I'll tell you what, uh, what's bothering me right now. And I, it was over my head. I completely forgot. I think I repressed that scratch and lick click clip from last week. Uh, so I appeased her. And then once she was done with her snack, she told me, well, your hands on your hip. And I just can't stop thinking about the scratch and lick guy. I then told her cameras were off. It was just me and her. I told her what I said on the podcast was true. I feel like, it is the lights, the cameras, the fact that the parade is going on that causes me to gag in an event like that. Now, why am I just recapping the Moises clip from last week? Because the Moises clip from this week is of a similar vein. And without really expecting it, I learned a lot about my body and my mind last week with the gagging, with the cameras and the lights, when something gnarly is on screen. This week's clip is similar, and I just want to give, I guess, a sort of courtesy to people watching that are a little bit squeamish or queasy of the sounds of gagging, uh, because I, I'm pretty sure it's it's going to happen on this clip. Viewing it wise, it's it's going to be blurred out on YouTube. I think it could pass even though it is gnarly and actually thematically, I know I'm just building this up. It's like, get on with it. There's been a similar clip shown on this show many moons ago. I think episode three. Yeah. Episode three is when this first was shown my first experience of, Oh, there's cameras and uh, the scratch and lick, I wasn't expecting it. This one I am, but I'm going to try and get through it. So without further ado, let's take a look at this moist clip. So it's a baboon, uh, another baboon play, playing. Uh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try playing with his willy. And um, we'll learn more about these primates on how they jerk it they're not you know just like going at it sometimes they are but um i think they're a little bit more gentle with their primate privates uh than than people are and so here's this baboon kind of playing with its willy and it has both hands wrapped around the the baboon shaft and it kind of just squeezed out Ooh. <laughs> it uh, it squeezes out a glob of that a glob of nut and then uh, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry I'm so sorry uh, uh, <laughs> it squeezes out a glob of nut 
and then just pitches it off of of the baboon wiener head, and the, uh, just a little <laughs> a little globby snack for this baboon. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't lie on this show with most everything. And, you know, when I say that, you know, I, I, this is real because I, I watch this. I watch this multiple times. Not multiple times. I watch it a few times. I watch it once to be like, yes, this is going on the show. And then I watch it again to prep it. And I'm like, this is probably going to make me gag. But in doing that, I didn't feel any sort of way. In that moment, I was like, oh, God, that's a, that's a cum gob just getting munched on. And I had the thought. I was like, I might get a little gaggy uh, when it comes to the show. And I did, and I am. There's one more time. So it, <clears throat> so, uh, it seems like it was like a controlled orgasm because it's not, you know, shooting out all over the place. It just kind of pools up above the baboon head, uh, you know, as, as, as cum would do. <laughs> and it just kind of like a pinch, like a dash of salt. It's more like a dash of cum. Just pinches it and then yum, yum, yum. Tasty, tasty, t- <laughs> tasty. <laughs> oh, oh my God. There's more clips here. I think this whole page. Oh, no. There's another monkey peen, a baboon peen just hanging out. Uh, Joyous Monkeys on Instagram. Uh, the suggested posts. I'm just going to play around here. I haven't seen. Okay. It's just monkey with its dick out. And then it just tucks it away. That's that's pretty tame. Um. It's another monkey holding a monkey baby. Just trying to see if there's any gnarliness. Oh, the monkey baby is shitting. Probably because it feels like it's about to fall. Uh, there's another monkey baby pulling on monkey mama titties. Uh, pretty normal stuff. I think for monkeys. And then, oh, okay. Uh, mama monkey nursing a baby monkey, but then also getting a num num of her nip teat milk as well. This is a fun page. Uh, followed. Uh, Joyous Monkeys, if you want to check it out. But I think just being accurate in the animal kingdom, the the initial clip right here of the glob of cum. Ooh, I'm able to stomach it this time a little bit. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's a baboon. Uh, but either way, primates doing weird stuff. Joyous Monkeys on Instagram. Go ahead and check it out. Oh, I'm just going to compose myself here for a second and moving on to the news. Yeah, what's the big deal, fella? It's just a little bit of news. Top story in the news. Lightning causes exploding toilet at Texas Dental Office. Maggie Kiefer works at the front desk of Circle C Dental in South Austin. One morning, she headed to work to open the office as she usually does. But when she arrived, Kiefer immediately recognized that something was off. There was an acidic, putrid smoke throughout the entire place. It burned to breathe and was pretty scary. She and her colleagues determined that the smoke was coming from the staff bathroom in the back of the building. When they saw what they saw there shocked them. Our toilet exploded, she said. It was black, and looking up at the ceiling, there was a vent that should have been, but there was just a black hole. I had no answers, just a lot of questions. And there is an image of this exploded toilet. Let's take a look there, if you've ever seen what an exploded toilet looks like. Uh, pretty gnarly. You have uh, what looks like the square here, which was the vent that she was talking about up top, just fell through. Uh, it even blew off the one of the hinges of the toilet paper. The toilet bowl is almost completely gone. And there's like this black melted porcelain looking texture puddle that's on the bottom of it. Interesting. And they said lightning caused it. Well, let's learn more. 
The scene was unrecognizable. What previously was a toilet had become a stub. Shards of ceramic shrapnel covered the bathroom floor and close to the toilet, or toilet stub, pieces of it had heated to the point where they had melted into a black sludge. Thankfully, no one was injured. The Austin Fire Department came to investigate the incident. Their theory was that the ceiling vent overheated, set on fire, and dropped onto the toilet seat, which started to burn. The toilet, Austin Fire Department said, then got so hot that the ceramic bowl cracked. Uh, maybe, but also maybe running with this theory of the, the lightning, because if we go back to this image of the toilet here, you have to think, if the, the top vent burned and then went down onto the toilet and then started burning, I guess it's the ceramic, not porcelain, uh, you would think if there was a fire, this is a bowl of water where you put your piss and shit in. So wouldn't the water just by being there and present somehow mitigate the damage? I don't know. Never set a toilet on fire. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Kiefer did have another theory, though. She found a new story of a toilet in Oklahoma that suffered a similar fate. In this instance, a lightning bolt struck an apartment building, traveled through the exhaust vent, and exploded the toilet. No one was injured in this event either. She said the toilet explosion from Oklahoma looks similar to theirs. And KXAN News meteorologist Sean Kelly looked at the weather archives of the night the toilet exploded. He didn't see a record of lightning during the time frame this happened, but there was some rain. Kelly said that there could have been some lightning that wasn't detected by radar. Maybe, or maybe not, looks to be a mystery of the exploding toilet. Was it a fire in the vent above, or was it lightning? I'd like to know your thoughts. Call the hotline. If you've uh, experienced an exploding toilet and not exploding into a toilet, we've all done that. A toilet that is literally exploded. Call the hotline, 818-275-SWAY. I'd love to hear your story. Speaking of stories, <laughs> moving on. Swish Ener Swish Swiss energy minister suggests people shower together to save power. As Switzerland tries to prevent power shortages this winter, local politicians have been suggesting some, let's say, intimate ways to save energy in trying to promote the government's energy saving plan. The head of the Department of Energy made the comments while trying to promote the government's latest power saving plan, suggesting that residents could turn off the computer when you don't need it, which by the way, a fantastic tip. If you're not using your computer, just put it to sleep. It extends the life of your computer and it doesn't waste electricity. Uh, turn off the lights, uh, another thing. I think there are there are shitty people in this world that are, are undoubtedly bad people. And then there are just shitty people that are good people that just do shitty things. If you walk out of a room and don't turn the light off when it's appropriate to do so, like at your home, uh, you're kind of shitty. You're kind of an asshole, but you're paying the power. If you don't pay your power bill, uh, then you are an asshole. Just turn your light off. Just train yourself. Mine's muscle memory. I walk out of a room, I reach for a light switch and turn it off. So if I was a Swiss citizen, I'd already be well on the way. And then lastly, the title of the article, Shower Together. Um, I do this too sometimes. Uh, I think you can put two and two together of who it's with, but it's an interesting question of households that don't have uh, romantic partners that live together. What if you live at home? It's your mom, your dad, and you. And your government's saying, we well, need to shower together. And Dad's out on business. He's not going to be home for a while. The government's saying you got to shower with your mom. <laughs> it comes as Switzerland tries to reduce energy usage by 15% to avoid blackouts this winter. While the current measures promoted by the government are voluntary, such as turning down heating, switching off lights, and apparently showering together, the federal council has warned that quotas and bans will be considered if consumption is not reduced. So they're going to they're going to ban power. They're going to do strategic blackouts to help preserve the grid. And if that happens and you're in Switzerland, you're thinking, what could have I have done to prevent this? Be like, well, shower with your mom. 
One woman opposing the announcement is accusing the government of seeking to, quote, administer our private lives down to the most trivial details. She joked that residents of Switzerland should make love every morning to warm themselves up after turning off the heating at night, have a shower, and go to work arm in arm, having left the car and scooter and electric bike in the garage. A little cheeky like, oh, okay, we're just going to be all happy-go-lucky in the wintertime with no power. We're just going to use our natural heat to survive. Of course, there's going to be critics with something like this, but uh, something you know here in the United States... Um, in winter, we really aren't, uh, faced with at least my area of the world that I live in. We're not really faced with any threats of, of blackouts due to overpower consumption. Uh, but still it's, it's good to, you know, turn off your computer when you're not using it. Um, turn off the lights just in general and, and shower together, just a good tip. So, uh, if you're not showering together with, uh, with someone you're comfortable showering together with, don't shower with your mom, please uh, do it. Help save the planet one shared shower at a time. Now let's check out the wild news. Oh, dude, that's some wild news. Study finds surprising number of Americans think chocolate milk comes from brown cows. <laughs> According to a recent survey, 7% of Americans believe chocolate milk comes from brown cows. The survey was conducted by the Innovation Center of U.S. Dairy in April. 1,000 adults 18 and over were asked questions about the role milk plays in their daily lives. The study found 48% of respondents weren't sure where chocolate milk came from. And 7%, as I mentioned, thought chocolate milk only comes from brown cows. So there might be more to the question of where chocolate milk comes from, I would say obviously, but 7% is a pretty sizable figure with uh, knowledge such as this of where does chocolate milk come from. Uh, I don't know if they're asking, well, where does chocolate milk come from? Well, the milk comes from the cow, the chocolate comes from the, the chocolate, then they mix it together and then they ship it to you. Or I don't know if they're asking more detailed questions, but maybe this was a, an oopsie daisy piece of information that they found of, oh, no. A lot of you actually think that it comes from brown cows. That's just naturally in a cow's body. There's chocolate. Cool. Uh, so out of the 1,000 adults, uh, with 7% of them, if you extrapolate that out to the American population, it adds up to 16.4 million people. That is more than the population of Ohio. So just think the next time you're at the grocery store, you pass the dairy aisle and you see chocolate milk. Just imagine everyone in Ohio thinks that that came from brown cows. Uh, the Washington Post linked the study to past studies that consistently show many Americans have no idea where their food comes from. For example, a study in the 1990s found that nearly 20% of people did not know hamburgers were made of beef. Well, I thought they were ham. Well, Get to know one on where your food comes from. And I hate to break it to you if you think that chocolate milk comes from brown cows. Um, well, I'm not going to say it doesn't. It could. It could have a brown cow. But the chocolate comes after. Okay? Okay. Well, that does it for the news. Let's get uh, let's get our dose of capitalism for the week. I'll tell you a little bit more about the Patreon. It's time for a dose of capitalism. Live, buy, consume, die. And I want to give a shout out to the Parade Plus supporters. I do it every week, uh, somewhat contractually obligated, but that doesn't stop me from doing it. I love giving the shout out to AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyla. If you want your name shouted out each week on the show, head to the Patreon. I mentioned earlier, you go to the show notes, you go to the video description on YouTube. There's a link, Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Chuck Sway. I don't believe that there is a, an underscore. There is not. It's just patreon.com slash Chuck Sway. Uh, like I said, uh, all the sources, uh, anything you want to look at that gets covered in the show is posted there for free to the public. You don't have to sign up, but if you want to support the show, Sign up for one of two plans, uh, Parade Plus, $6.90 a month, uh, Parade Plus Infinity, $14.69 a month, bunch of different perks there that you can get. Go on and, and check it out. I won't bore you with the details if you're not interested. 
because uh, I mean, hey, this is a free show. You get it for free. Um, okay, going to the last segment of this week, we have boop boop the deep shot. Guns are strong. Look at that big old belly. Chuck, you're getting me restless. The deep shot. So leading off on the deep shot, you should be conditioned to it by now. It's going to have something to do with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. And seeing as Thanksgiving was last week. Oh, which, by the way, <coughs> excuse me, that wasn't it. By the way, I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. I hope you had a feast. I hope you gained a bunch of weight after the meal and then shit it all out. I actually weighed myself. Uh before the meal, this was an idea from my, my buddy Hans. He did a, a pre meal weigh in and then post I weighed in at, it was on Snapchat. So I can't remember the exact numbers. I think before the meal, a completely nude because I wanted to be like, Hey, just, just me. Uh, it was like two, two ninety two. Oh no, I have data. I <laughs> say, and we're it's 2022. Everything is on an app now. So I'll let you know. I'll finish up this uh, Thanksgiving recap and then move on to this Thanksgiving bill stuff. Okay, so in the morning, I weighed in at uh, 290.6, if you're so concerned. Uh, after the meal, this one I didn't save because it was a little bit skewed. But after the meal, it was like 297. So then you think, holy shit, you ate seven pounds of food on Thanksgiving? I don't think so. Uh, I wasn't nude you know, throughout the day, I didn't weigh myself nude, go on, make my Thanksgiving meal nude, and then just weigh myself. Then I was clothed. Uh, I was wearing like super thin pants and just a t-shirt, like a cotton t-shirt. So that added some weight. Sure. Uh, but still probably uh, you want to say, you know, clothes are two pounds, like five pounds of food. I can eat. You know who else was eating the Buffalo bills. Uh, they played out in Detroit the second time in like a week uh, because as we learned last week, snow in Buffalo was killing people. They weren't going to play a game of football there. There was feet of snow, not inches, feet. Uh, so they played their matchup against the Browns uh, in Detroit. And then for some reason, they went home. Detroit to Western New York. They're like, well, we're, we have to be back here in four days. Let's just go back home to all the snow and risk just not being able to make it back for Thanksgiving game. But they went back, I guess conditions had improved, uh, went back home to Buffalo and then went back to Detroit, played on Thanksgiving. The Lions have been, I think it's a law in Detroit that the Lions have to play on Thanksgiving. And so this year was just like any other year. Uh, they played their game against the Bills on Thanksgiving. Now thinking, you know, the Lions, as of late, in the last, I don't know, decade, uh, have not been a great team and they just are kind of, it's a tra tradition for a lot of people to tune in on Thanksgiving and watch the lions get the snot kicked out of them. And if their team is playing, it's just that much more cherry on top for the Thanksgiving festivities. Uh, this game was a little closer, it came down to the wire bills inched out. Josh Allen got his Turkey leg. And this was, uh, the, the big highlight from the game. So I'm going to roll this. This is 23 seconds left. Uh, the game is tied 25 to 25. And you would say 23 seconds. Well, that's too much time when you have Josh Allen at the helm. And evidently so, because he drops back, throws a dot to Stefan Diggs, puts him up, sets him up for field goal range. Uh, they kick the field goal. They win the game. They get their turkey. Uh, some math here that was done. I have no idea how it was calculated. Uh, the pass that was just, you saw as blurry, because I don't want the NFL to copyright strike me, uh, clocked at 59 miles per hour. Now, somehow, they did the conversions, bada bing, bada boom, and that's the equivalent of a 99 mile per hour fastball in baseball. No idea how they how they calculated that, but oh, that's a hot arm. And I'm hoping the bills from this win, these last two wins 
get hot, stay hot. They go on to the big game, and I keep doing Josh Allen strokings here on the deep shot uh, until that point. Uh, moving on, uh, now that I've got my stroke in, I got my little glob of Josh Allen goo that taken care of. <laughs> uh, staying in the NFL, uh, the Cardinals, they fire the assistant head coach, Sean Kugler. Kugler. I like Kugler better. Uh, after he allegedly groped a woman in Mexico City, the Cardinals played the 49ers. This was probably, what, two weeks ago on Sunday night in Mexico City. Um, this coach, Sean Kugler, uh, allegedly groped a female member of the hotel security staff when in Mexico City. The incident took place Sunday night. Uh, hold on. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it took place Sunday night, and by Monday morning, Kugler had been sent away from the team and back to the United States. His firing was announced Tuesday after the Cardinals' 38-10 to defeat against the 49ers. Oh, it was Monday night. Apologies. It wasn't Sunday night. Monday night football, Mexico City. Uh, oh, so the, the day before, uh, he went groping Sunday night, and Monday morning, they got reports of it, and they're like, get out. Back to the U.S. you go. You're not coaching anymore, you cug. Uh, when NFL teams make, uh, or when they travel, pardon me, to Mexico City, they're normally told to stay in and around the same hotel out of safety concerns. The Cardinals, horses say, were encouraged to do the same while being able to walk among a group of hotels. So, I mean, yeah, Mexico can get a little dicey from time to time. Uh, you have these star players. You want to protect them so they can play in their game. Uh Somehow the coach, I don't know, a little bit of uh, condensed cabin fever. He's like, I want some tits. I want some Mexican tits. Like, oh, you can't leave the hotel. It's, you know, safety concerns. He's like, oh, I need to get my tits. Just, you know, doing cuggler things, you know. Uh, and then somehow there's not really much detail as to how it happened, but he ended up groping a, a member of the hotel security. It's, it's one thing to do something to get security involved, like grope a, another, uh, a patron, a resident at the hotel, or even an employee. But when you just go straight to security and grope a dope dope, uh, yeah, I'm not surprised that he lost his job. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. Uh, <laughs> when it comes to personal space and I don't know, just not being pervy, I guess, you know, this is why I never have to get worried about getting fired from my NFL coaching job if I had one, because uh, I'm not going to go and, and grope people. Uh, it's just not me. It's just not my style, you know. But for Sean Kegler, uh, it is. And now he's just out of a job. Maybe he can be uh, a member of the uh, join the FBI, the federal body inspector. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, next story. <laughs> Greenland cannot join FIFA because not enough grass grows for a football field. So uh, as a lot of you are probably aware, the World Cup is on uh, right now in Qatar and uh, uh, soccer is being had a uh, football football. If uh, you're from other parts of the world, um, this has nothing to do with Greenland because Qatar the host country has a team, but they actually were eliminated. So, oh, too bad. Um, but yeah, Greenland, you think, just given the name, you have football field, right? Soccer field. Pardon me. I got to be Americanized here. Um, but no, they don't. Until 1979, Greenland was a part of Denmark as a colony and had limited autonomy. Since 1979, Greenland has tried to develop more autonomy and has attempted to be recognized as an actual nation. Hey, we're legit. It's cold as fuck up here, but we're legit. Uh, one of the ways that has tried to do this is through sports. The Greenlandic Federation of Taekwondo, Badminton, Handball, Volleyball, Biathlon, and Table Tennis, or Ping Pong. Is it the same Table Tennis and Ping Pong Soccer and Football? I don't know. Uh, they've gained full membership into the International Federation for those respective sports. However... The same can't be said for soccer. Apparently, Greenland isn't green enough to be a part of FIFA. Executives claim that the lack of proper grass and the weather conditions of the country make it unsuitable to play and practice soccer in. 
and therefore it cannot grant Greenland entry into FIFA. So if you're watching the World Cup, if you're rooting for your home country, uh, just because that's where you're from and it's like, hey, uh, that's my squad or you're rooting for another country because of a player or what have you. I mean, mine's France. Uh, way, way deep dig shot, dig, deep shot, <laughs> deep shot reference Antoine Griezmann and I love Derek Rose. Uh, France is my squad, but if it was the US, it was France, if it was Qatar, if it was Brazil, wherever, they can have soccer because it's not just a bunch of snow. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I don't want to dig on you Greenlandic people too much because I'm sure you do love your soccer. Uh, but if you have a bunch of snow, I don't know how you're kicking that ball around a field, a pitch, sorry, a pitch. So um, I guess keep doing what you're doing. Uh, if the Swiss people are going to defy the government, not shower together and use up more power. If we continue to burn fossil fuels and just completely shit on the environment and the ozone, in due time, Greenland will be green enough because uh, it's just going to warm up and then they can have soccer. So I guess something to look forward to if you're a, a diehard Greenlandic soccer fan that wants to be a part of FIVA and maybe even in the World Cup, uh, just keep, you know, uh, using plastics, um, water bottles and what have you burn plastic. Actually, that'll, that'll speed up the process. Um, aerosol cans, you know how to destroy the environment, Greenland. Um, and if you don't just take a book out of, uh, out of our page, the United States or in India or China, what I'm getting at is if you believe in your dreams, they'll come true. And even if your dreams are at the expense of the climate, fuck it. It's sports. This is the deep shots. We're here. And we need to round out the deep shot. As we always do, we got to get country strong. Country strong, play the week. And I got to call out a country strong Clyde because he's the one that does the country strong play of the week. Well, I will, uh, I'll see you guys later. Oh my God, my hair. We have to do. My name is Country Strong Cloud, and this is the Country Strong Play of the Week. I hope you've been doing the show so far. Uh, but in all reality, I know you're just waiting for me to come out to show you what's Country Strong. And let's take a look at it. Right here, you have a handoff to Country Strong, big old man. Oh my goodness. That there's a built man carrying the ball just has to get one yard down, and he does because he's country strong. And this is the jumbo package, what they like to call it in the sport. They need to get a yard. They need to score a touchdown. And it, they might have tried, you know, first, second, maybe third down, and they're like our regular speedy guy in the back we hand the ball off to. It's just not working. We can't get him in. And then they go and call them. It's like, we're going to run jumbo. We're going to get this touchdown. That's exactly what they did here. Handing it off to the big man. And here's the thing. With that kind of size, that kind of just beef that he possesses, he doesn't have to run far. Like I said, it's a one-yard run to get a touchdown. And he just has to go through a defender, a single defender that's, yeah, I don't know, half his size. Balls through him. And that there is a touchdown. That there is country strong. Now, when I found this clip, yeah, country strong, <clears throat> pardon me, I saw this one and I thought, <clears throat> that there's country strong that's going on the show. What I didn't notice is this little air right here. There's another country strong clip that was hidden to me initially. But now it is seen. Let's take a look. Country strong again. You take... Just as big of a man, I don't know if this is the same lad, but just as big, and instead of it running back, you set him to wide out, to wide receiver, you bound, country strong things are bound to happen. Let's take a look here. Get a little shove off. 
Throwing the ball, nice little catch, turning up the field. They're grabbing and cutting the strong. You can't take one man to take him down. It takes two of them to take him down. And really just a third is him himself. I mean, he builds some bit there, country strong. Just trying to get it going. He kind of slows himself down. You got to keep your feet moving, but he's playing wide out, wide receiver. He's normally not there. That is that is not a place typically. If you don't understand the game of football, well, I'm going to tell you, when you're that big, you don't stand in that part of the field rarely ever. But if you're running a jumbo package, whether it's a jumbo ground or jumbo through the air, that's when you set them country strongs out there. There's one more time here. Push off. Nice catch. I mean, his, his his pads, I mean, his body, of course, is massive country strong, but his pads too. I mean, they're, they're pushing out. Turning up field, I mean, he's kind of got that ball tucked away, but, you know, you, you got to protect it. And they have the man that he burned in here, right here, just starting to wrap up for uh, trying to get a tackle. Starts to wrap up. He lowers his shoulder. But, I mean, little 11 here uh, is smart. Grabs him by the waist and just tries to take all of his mass down to take all of Country Strong's mass down. And that's what happens. Gets a few steps forward, and they take him down. Now, this Country Strong man, obviously, like I said, doesn't normally play out in this area. But he'll learn. So there's one thing to be Country Strong just by birth, and this man most definitely is Country Strong by birth. But it's another to be Country Strong by skill. So he's going to work on it. He's going to get better. Oh, man. I love me some country strong. All righty. Well, uh, with that, that pretty much does it for the show. Uh, except, oh, no, I, I want to hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's get back into country strong mode one more time. Uh, I want to give, I've had this one laid out, and I keep forgetting about it. Someone sent in their own Country Strong voice clip that I've had prepped here that I keep forgetting about. So I'm going to play this. Just uh, imagine that we didn't get bored. To, uh, you know, rewind about 45 seconds. You just saw this Country Strong man catch a ball, uh, turn up field, get tackled, but still Country Strong nonetheless. You just saw that, right? And then you're going to hear this. Country strong, country strong. No, I'm stronger than the country because I'm crunchy strong. Crunchy strong and country strong. That was compliments of Mark. Uh, I'll give the shout out out there. If you want to send in your own country strong takes uh, of an audition of sorts, there's the hotline and there's a number 818 275 way. Call that number up. This is your assignment. There's the other one there. If you've experienced an exploding turlet, uh, that's one thing. Chances are you haven't, so you wouldn't really want to call in and explain something that you haven't experienced before. But I know that you know how to do a country strong blast, if if, it, if you want to call it that. Country strong! So go and call that number, 818-275-SWAY, and just give your best country strong like my friend Mark did. I'm going to play it for you one more time to get some experience or uh, uh, inspiration, rather. Uh, call number up and give your best country strong. I'm country strong. Country strong? No, I'm stronger than the country because I'm crunchy strong. So call number up. I know you got a country strong bomb in you, and I want to hear it. All righty. Now, moving on to wrapping up the show, we got to pray to the almighty algorithm. Juke said at the very beginning of the show, hey, like, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a rating, positive or negative. It does not matter. What does matter is at the end of every show, we bow our heads and we pray to the almighty algorithm because if you know it or not, the almighty algorithm controls everything. As far as viewing, listening, anything you do online, there's that almighty algorithm looking out for you, making sure it's going to show you the best of the best of what you want to see. And so we have to give thanks to that. So bow your heads if you feel so inclined. You don't have to. But bow your heads, show some respect, and pay an homage to the almighty algorithm. Oh, almighty algorithm, 
It's me. Such a strong cloud. <laughs> I just want to take the time to give praise to you and your power, what you show us. You make sure I see one country strong clip, but then you hide another one behind it. No one can do that except you, almighty algorithm. And for that, I'm thankful. I'm also thankful for a baboon. Splooging in its hand and having a little snack. That was sure fun to watch, wasn't it? And for everything else in this show, in this whole parade, we owe it all to you. Amen. All right, well, that is going to do it for this week's episode of the Sway Parade. Another final shout out to these Parade Plus members to get their name shouted out. If you want to get your name shouted out, head to the Patreon. You can get that set up. AJ Joe, Michael Davis, Reverend Tanner Mills, Quinn, and Tyler, thank you so much, gentlemen, for your support. And thank you. Even if you haven't given any sort of money, it don't matter. Just your engagement and your time is what we're most thankful for here at the Sway Parade. So thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Later, Gator! <laughs>